level pain, um, a UCL tear. So we're gonna go over some tests for, for UCL. Cool. So the first one I'll do is very basic. It's just gonna be a valgus stress test. All right, and you guys may have read about this. What I'm gonna do is come in and I'm gonna stabilize her arm between my hip and my elbow, right here. So my hands are free. I have my hands to do whatever I want. This also keeps her shoulder pretty stable as I'm moving, right? And I'm gonna grab just distal to the um, fossa here, and I'm gonna move her into a valgus stress. Now this is at 20 degrees or 30 degrees, right? You can also test this at full extension, All right? So I do both. If she gets pain at one or the other, then I'm thinking, okay, let's try this next test, which is called valgus extension overload or moving valgus stress test, right? Which you guys have gone over, um, and see if that's an issue too. You guys good with that one or not? And we're gonna practice all these, so I'll come around and help you with hand placement and things like that, all right? So here, you're gonna get them up into this throwing position. You're gonna provide a valgus force here, right? And then you're gonna move them through their arc of motion as you're still providing that valgus force. You feel that stress mm -hmm. here inside your elbow there? So if they have pain there, that's a very, very good indicator, a very good test um, that's backed by research that says they probably have a UCL injury. Got it? What is that one called? Or is it just a variation of the valgus? It's called a moving valgus stress test. And basically reproduces their arm going through the throwing motion from flexion to ball release. Right? And you're providing this valgus, which typically force of throwing provides the valgus, which reproduces their symptoms. So we're just trying to duplicate what's happened to them in real life. Good. The other one for UCL I like is called the milking maneuver. Kind of a weird name, but go ahead and lay on your back here. <coughs> over. This one you're going to have their arms supported by the table. Scoot towards me just a tad bit. And you're going to kind of come up usually on the stool and grab underneath. So you're going to put their elbow in your elbow. And then you're going to grab their thumb. And all you're going to do is with your arm here, you're going to provide that valgus force as you pull down on their thumb. And they'll get pain here. It's called milking because it's like milking a cow, right? We <laughs> 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 won't be able to do this. And it's for this location. Yep, it's for radio. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, it's for radio. Yeah, it's for radio. Go over lateral epicondylitis. From the, uh, well, you'll notice on Thursday in the lecture that that is very, very common. About 1 to 3% of the entire population has this going on. Um, it's usually due to repetitive extension forces or twisting forces in the wrist. And it's commonly called what? The golfer's elbow? I think. Yeah, golfer's elbow. Tennis, kind of lateral. Tennis, Tennis elbow. elbow. See, I just call them lateral or medial. I don't know. <laughs> so um, there's one test uh, called the Cozen sign or Cozen's test. Essentially, you're going to palpate with your thumb the lateral epicondyle. Right, just distal to it. You're going to turn them over into pronation. You're going to extend they're have them extend their wrist, and then you'll resist that wrist extension as you're trying to take them into also elbow extension. So you're trying to take them from here to here. They're resisting against that. You're palpating that lateral epicondyle to see if it hurts when they do that. So guys, let's do it with him. He's going to talk you through it. Okay, so yep, you ready? What did you say? So grab your partner. It's called the Cozen sign. C O Z E N. We're going to grab your patient's elbow, support it, put your thumb on their lateral epicondyle, have them pull their hand up, and because they're using those extensors, this might even hurt there, and then you're going to resist their wrist extension, okay? And you feel it's putting stress there, right? Yeah. It's flexion. So we're putting those tissues on stretch. So same thing, you're going to palpate lateral epicondyle. And then you're going to move them into elbow extension and then wrist flexion and provide some overpressure into wrist flexion. And if their pain is reproduced on their lateral uh, epicondyle, then that's a positive test for epicondylitis. Okay? Does that make sense how Cozen sign is an actively, those muscles are actively engaged. This is more of a passive one. Both are doing the same th thing, putting tension on the lateral epicondyle. So try that. It's just passive motion. There. Cool. All right.
the reason that is important is because those uh, those extensors attach obviously in the lateral, lateral epicondyle, and when they resist here, you're stressing that. Yeah, that extensor carpi radialis brevis is getting tested there, which is the most commonly injured tendon. Um, yeah, still palpate, and then so you stabilize them, so you're not just pushing their arm down. Stabilize, push down their middle finger. And what one is this one called? Maudley's test. Maudley's test. The middle finger sign. The middle finger sign. <laughs>